What's up, Samurai? We are back in small and today we've got a special video, which you probably already saw in the title. We have a release date for the Gunslinger rework update. Now, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be going through uh, the more recent patch notes, and I am currently on the test server right now. So keep in mind that this is basically finalized. But the thing is that I don't really want to end up going through every little bit of the patch notes. It's more so to give you all a summary of it all, right? Like rather than just going full on. So obviously, first and foremost, when is the release date? So the devs have commented and said that we're excited to announce that the Gunslinger no scope update is coming to PC February 28th. So this Tuesday, we're going to end up having the update. Uh, it brings exciting new changes to Cr Trove, get ready to have this explosive update for the Gunslinger class, which is receiving an overhaul. Not really an overhaul, it's more so just changes to numbers. Uh, includes updates to the abilities and playstyle. No, it doesn't. <laughs> it really doesn't. The Gunslinger plays basically the exact same. You guys are probably sitting there wondering what the console release date's going to be. We don't know. As usual, we have no idea. I would hope, fingers crossed, you get it in March, but the only guarantee that I can give you is you'll get it this year. But anyways, uh, the patch notes on the test server are a bit odd because they mention uh, like changes to the Gunslinger's damage without referring to what we have as the original damage numbers on live server. So take, for example, it says, Basic attack, shoots an energy projectile towards foes dealing 140% magic damage. I don't know what the base value percentage of that is, devs, because I can't see the code like you. My point is that when this update goes live, then we'll tackle all of the significant changes with the Gunslinger because they'll actually give us proper examples of what it was before and then what it turns into. Right. So the other big thing that is going to end up changing with this update is hub merchant improvements. So they've changed it so that certain merchants uh, will end up. Uh, it says merchants that restock now show if they restock and display how frequently they restock. So uh, let's take a quick peek. I would assume what that means is Corexian will end up saying that he comes every two weeks. Nope, I don't know. Wait a minute. You can buy from Corexian's inventory like every day that he's visiting. I didn't know that. Like his shop resets daily. <laughs> I'm going to have to double check that. I honestly didn't know that. So that's actually pretty interesting. Wow, that's already a much better update. But, you know, obviously it's more so like NPCs like this. Doesn't say when this guy, oh, resets daily, I see. So it doesn't show the visual representation of it. Weird that it's so inconsistent, but stuff like this guy, it, you know, he finally shows the Astral Echoes currency. So the way that this is gonna work is obviously with this NPC, you can buy certain items out of him that will cost flux. So where do you end up seeing your flux? Well, as you can see, we can hover over any of these items and if we select it, it will actually change to the currency of the item that we have clicked on and selected, right? So a really nice little improvement to the NPC. They also, uh, the currency displays on merchants can now handle 10 digits up from six, uh, so on and so forth. You know, there's a couple really nice little quality of life changes to the merchants. Again, we'll go into much more detail uh, when this update ends up going to the live server, but they mentioned that there's also additional merchants that have been scattered around the hub that make it easier for players to find certain things that would otherwise be difficult in the store. So uh, basically they have merchants now available that will like this guy right here that literally show stuff that would otherwise be like in the style section of the store, as well as like other areas of the store. But it's a specifically focused NPC that sells those specific things. Obviously this is still going to end up being a cash shop NPC, but I do appreciate that because otherwise it was pretty difficult to end up navigating a lot of the menus in Trove. They've also changed it so that now these signs you can activate and they'll open their, their respective menu as well, which again, very, very nice little quality of life improvement. 
for the beginner player uh, aspect of the game. Uh, they also made it so that chocolate fish have been evicted from plasma fishing. So I guess that there was some issues where some uh, plasma fish were available in chocolate and just, I, I don't know, they changed it. Uh, players now have the option to compost all fishing trophies rather than just one at a time, which is great. Uh, respawn, respawn command no longer works in delves, which kind of sucks. Uh, they re removed a step in the tutorial that asked the player to use a bomb. Uh, players who participate in too many AFK Bomber Royale matches will be automatically blocked from player Bomber Royale for a while. This is a huge, terrible, terrible change. Uh, because I, so basically the wording on it is very strange, but I think that it's saying not you participate in a match that's filled with AFK players more. So you go into a match and then you AFK the entire match. So this is to try and prevent bots from going into Bomber Royale. Problem is developers, um, Without those bots, nobody plays Bomber Royale. I can't get into a match with enough people without those bots. So <laughs> it kind of, it ruins Bomber Royale and makes it a lot, lot harder to play. You're only going to be able to play Bomber Royale during prime hours. And if you're on like different servers or only can end up logging in during the dead hours, well, then you just can't grind anything out of Bomber anymore. So there was a bunch of additional changes that I never talked about. That first set of patch notes we did end up discussing during my live stream where we first discovered and started messing with the stuff that was on the test server. So there's actually been quite a few additional changes that they've put out over you know the following days. Uh, and I kind of wanted to go into those a little bit. So they apparently ended up changing the charge shot. So then when it's max, uh, maximally charged, when it's charging is at maximum, let's rephrase that, uh, it will apply the debuff properly. So apparently there was the, you know, the debuff that the ability is going to end up getting when this goes to the live server. That was not originally being applied to the charge so shot. So eventually they fixed it. Uh, club presidents can now remove their own ability to destroy club world with bombs. That's actually really, really nice because honestly speaking, I'm, I'm always sitting there and I'm always worried that I'll end up using my bombs and destroying a bunch of things. So that's a very, very nice change. There's also a couple things that they changed with some skill tree junk. Uh, they increased the area of effect damage of overcharged by uh, two, 375% up from God knows what. Uh, generally speaking, they just changed a couple things with the gunslinger so that the damage is uh, across the board a little bit more consistent. Um, to give you guys a quick report on the gunslinger, by the way, this gunslinger rework I, you know, I say it's very underwhelming because the functionality of the class remains relatively the same, but those of you that mained Gunslinger back in the day are going to be very pleasantly surprised with the changes. You know, the gameplay is still going to end up being the same, which to me has always been very boring. I never liked Gunslinger's gameplay and uh, these changes are no exception because all they really do is just basically bump up the numbers for all of the damage. But you can still get through a U10 Leviathan in like a minute or something. Solarian is obviously still going to end up being uh, much faster. And Gunslinger is still severely lacking movement speed abilities. But at the very least, you can main it, right? That's kind of the biggest problem with Gunslinger on the live server currently. So they're also going to be adding two new commands for easier traversal in Delves, which is slash Delve Start and slash Delve Boss. Delve start will allow players to return to the beginning of the delve before the boss has been spawned, so rather than respawning. Uh, and then delve boss will allow players to teleport to the boss once it has been spawned. That's very nice. Unfortunately, I don't feel like those commands are going to be something that most players will remember. Uh, I personally feel like they should just make it so that there's a little prompt on your screen, like a notification that just stays there, or on honestly just automatically boot me to the boss. There's no reason not to, right? They also added six new Bonewalker dinosaur mounts. Uh, they were added to the game and can be found under the rare category in collections. These mounts sometimes create unlootable decorative bones near where they leap and stomp. I don't know why they say unlootable, oh, because it's just bones that would go on the ground. And if you laser man see it, it wouldn't actually give you the resource. Anyways, five tradable mounts can be found in the following places. Very rarely, by the way. 
Two can be looted from any creature within the primordial pit delve biome. Uh, Tyrannosaur, uh, then one can be looted from the Tyrannosaurus Rex within Jurassic Jungle Adventure World. At least it's not all in delves. Skeletal Vikings can drop them. Uh, Ashen Devourer can also drop them as well, which is quite ridiculously difficult to find those enemies. Uh, once these five mounts has been unlocked, a six can be obtained from the fungi thing shapers in the Ashen Wastes, which is the lower portion of the Sundered Uplands section of the Sundered Uplands. That's kind of cool. They never had like a progressive functioning mount like that. I wonder if they threw them anywhere else or if we just have to rarely get them or are they tradable? Like, I don't know. So they're also adding six new Viking themed pets that are being added as rare spawn merchant items. So defeating one and three star dungeons in the following biomes uh, will give you a chance to see these new merchants. So Treasure Isle, Permafrost, Kandoria, and Jurassic Jungle. That's pretty cool, actually. I like that effect. Uh, these merchants spawn very rarely upon completing dungeons in specific biomes, and each player may only purchase the pets from these merchants once per week. Of course, they time-gated it. Uh, they can be traded or placed on the market, though, so that already makes it pretty dang good. But that means they're going to be really, really expensive within the first few weeks, and they'll just get cheaper and cheaper as the game goes on. That's still very nice. I like those effects. And yeah, there's still going to end up being some other additional changes, but I feel like those were the big ones that were worth talking about. Uh, and again, we'll end up going into more detail with everything to do with this update on Tuesday. Either way, thanks for watching. Smash like, sub for more, buy the merch you want, support the channel, and have a wonderful day, everybody.